All right, well, thank you everyone for, uh, for joining us today. We'll, we'll just wait another minute or two before we start. Uh, today's um, event is, uh, is uh, organized by eARMA, which is the European Association of Research Managers and Administrators, um, and also by the uh, Policy and Representation Committee. Um, uh, this uh, event today will be dedicated to discussing the uh, research impact agenda and its influence on institutional strategies in the European and wider international context. My name is uh, Joaquin. I work at the uh, Champalma Foundation as an advisor to the board on research and innovation. And I will be your facilitator today. Uh, it's um, with uh, great pleasure that I also have joining me uh, several members of the uh, Yarma PRC uh, um, committee um, and also Ryzen Cheshire, I, I hope I'm saying it correctly, uh, from uh, Science Foundation uh, Ireland. So um, the Policy and uh, Representation Committee is one of eArmor's uh, standing committees. Um, it was uh, created with, let me see if I can change my slide here. It was created with the purpose of keeping track of the latest EU research funding policy developments. Uh, making the research managers uh, and administrators' voice heard in the research funding policy negotiations, paying naturally uh, a special attention to the uh, European Commission's uh, framework program preparation and uh, to provide um, information and active engagement uh, for EARMA members regarding the EU research funding issues. So in 2020 and 2021, the, the PRC's uh, work has been also accompanied by the um, uh, Horizon Europe Task Force, um, which is a working group comprised of uh, uh, former PRC members who have uh, contributed uh, significantly to the negotiations and preparations of uh, several events, and in particular, of course, the Horizon Europe Framework Program negotiations. So leading to today's session, um, in 2019, the uh, PRC has launched a survey on uh, ERMA members' institutional approaches to impact strategies. Uh, the aim of that survey was to identify best practices and in how institutions are responding strategically to the research impact agenda and the ways in which this relates to national and European policy context. So um, these are my, my colleagues at the PRC committee, uh, both current and former members, and, um, and some of these uh, uh, former members are also in the uh, Resident Europe Task Force. Um, uh, our speakers today will be presenting a short summary of the survey uh, that we conducted and highlight some important findings um, that emerged. Uh, we will then hear both the institutional uh, practitioner's uh, point of view and the funder's perspective on the impact agenda. And towards the end of the session, we will open the floor to questions from, from the audience. So therefore, please allow me to present our speakers in order of appearance today. We have with us uh, Bettina Urig, who is joining us from the um, Oslo Metropolitan University in Norway. Bettina has been working with uh, impact and uh, shareholder engagement and the framework programs for research and innovation since the early 90s. Uh, since May 2017, uh, Bettina has been uh, the impact manager for the Horizon uh, 2020 project called DARE, uh, Dialogue about Radicalization and Equality, which will end in October 2021. One of her uh, tasks as senior advisor for internationalization at NOVA is to discuss and develop pathways to impact uh, together with proposal teams for Horizon Europe projects. Bettina is a member of the ERMA Policy and Representation Committee and the Horizon Europe Task Force. Then we'll have Andrew Jackson, um, who's the Director of Research and Innovation Services at Durham University in the UK, uh, where he leads the Research and Innovation Services Directorate and supports the development and delivery of the university's research and engagement strategy. Andrew is active in external research networks across the UK and internationally. So both Bettina and Andrew are members of the Yarma Policy and Representation Committee um, and the Horizon Europe Task Force. And will talk to us about the motivation behind the survey that we conducted as well as its key findings. 
Then we will have uh, Barbara Serrano, who has been working since 2016 as a senior executive uh, research officer at the Office for Research and Relations at uh, DTU, the Technical University of Denmark. Uh, Barbara has, been, has over 15 years uh, of experience working with international relations uh, and research management in the government, uh, international organizations and universities. Uh, since last year, Barbara has also been leading the DTU's uh, research impact agenda uh, project. Uh, this project aims to define um, uh, DTU's impact strategy, identify tools and activities that support DTU's researchers, fundraisers, and research support employees when addressing impact at the proposal stage. Um, um, okay. Barbara will be presenting us, uh, to us today uh, uh, Technical University of Denmark uh, as a case study. Um, then last but not least, is, it's a great honor to have with us Dr. Rosen Cheshire. Uh, she's the head of the individual-led research team at uh, the Science for Society Directorate at Science Foundation Ireland. Uh, Rosen manages a team of program managers to deliver a range of funding streams, including frontiers for research, research professorship, professorship and research infrastructure, as well as the new Pathways program for early career researchers. Ryzen's team also monitors the post-award uh, performance of a wide portfolio of awards uh, through annual reporting and midterm progress visit, site visits. So Ryzen will, will be giving us an overview of how impact is assessed and monitored in Science Foundation Ireland and why it is important to the agency's overall mission. So before we get on with the session, um, just a quick note to say that if you would like to ask a question to any of our speakers today, uh, or if you want to share your comments on any particular aspect, uh, please send me a direct message using the uh, Zoom chat feature. Um, and I will then read your question aloud when, the, when we open the floor for the Q&A towards the end. So without further ado, uh, we'll first be hearing from Bettina, who will introduce uh, to us the Impact Strategy Survey. And I will stop sharing my screen at this moment. If I can. Thank you, for Joachim, for this introduction. So my name is Bettina Urich, and I'm working at Oslo Metropolitan University. And together with uh, Andrew, supported by the Policy and Representation Committee, and the, we uh, were responsible for the Impact Strategy Survey. And I would like to say a few words about why we did it, uh, about what, what it was about, and when, and who answered the survey. So next slide, please. So why we did it? You all know that since the 90s, the discussions and the focus on creating impact has been growing for research funders and also for the applicants, mainly for proposal writers. So actually we were wondering if this focus and demand for creating impact and writing about impact has also led to any discussions at research organizations, or maybe even to impact strategies at research organizations. Therefore, we were wondering how the EAMA members are working with the impact strategies in their organizations. And uh, also we wanted to know in which countries are EAMA members working with impact strategies. Based on the findings from the survey, we wanted to feed the discussion on impact and to support the research environments and their stakeholders when it comes to definitions of impact, working with impact pathways, and even working with long-term societal impact. So here you, can have, here you have the link to the uh, summary of the survey, which was published on the AMA website. It's only 10 pages, so it's really not a long document to read, and I recommend that you look at it afterwards if you haven't already done it. Next. So what was the impact strategy survey about? Um, we really wanted to look at in, in institutional impact strategies and not at the impact strategies described in proposals or implemented by projects. That's what we are very often discussing. We are discussing 
how we write about impact in proposals and how we can work with pathways to impact in projects. But here we wanted to know if organizations really have an impact strategy. The areas covered in the uh, survey were the definitions of impact, impact and national requirements, impact work at organization and level. And we also asked if an organization has an uh, a strategic framework covering impact or if they have a separate impact strategy. If they had a separate impact strategy, we were wondering if this is really also including or covering international engagement and even maybe ambitions for working with Horizon Europe. In addition, of course, we wanted to know who is working with impact and how. Next. So when did we implement this uh, survey? We implemented from, we, this, uh, the survey was open from November, 2019 until April, 2020. And even so we encouraged the Emma colleagues several times to respond. We only got 23 responses, which leads us to a response rate of 14.6% based on the information that the Emma that the Emma had 157 institutional members in spring 2020. It were, the colleagues responding came from 20 different universities and from three different research organizations. As you can see, they were mainly from Western European countries, three from four already from UK, which is of course related to the REF. They are working with in UK for many years. Then we also got three answers from Belgium, two from Ireland, two from Italy, two from Portugal, and two from the Netherlands. And then from Austria, Denmark, Finland, France, Iceland, Norway, Spain, and Switzerland, each one, one, one answer from each of these countries. So as you can see, there were no responses from Eastern European countries. But of course, we know that the AMA also doesn't have many members in Eastern European countries. And maybe this answers or the response rate would have been higher now because now also in, at, in Eastern European countries, I know impact is discussed more also at national level. For example, also in Poland, the National Science Center is now asking organizations how they are working with impact. So then I give the word to Andrew, who will present uh, the results from the survey. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bettina. All right, let me just share my screen. Can everyone see that slide? And is it the right one? Okay, cool. Right. Uh, Good morning, everyone, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here and to, to join you to discuss this this survey. So I'm just going to literally go through the um, some of the key results of the survey um, and highlight, I guess, some of the findings that came out of it. So th the first area we looked at, as Bettina mentioned, was the drivers behind the impact agenda. So in other words, um, what, what were the uh, what, what what were the the, the definitions that um, that led to an individual institution's uh, approach to impact. In some cases, these referenced national policies or frameworks, um, but the bulk of responses focused on, on socio-economic elements of impact, uh, with just three respondents referencing academic or scientific impact. Um, bibliometric indicators, things like H-index, citations, and journal impact factors were mentioned by a few respondents as well. Uh, but, but as you might expect, the, the bulk of the uh, of the focus was on uh, societal and economic impact. Um, so the, the next question we asked was really trying to identify where the external drivers came for an individual institution's response to, to impact. Um, the bulk of, of respondents talked about impact uh, in funding proposals. Some of these were impact specific proposals, things like challenge led research, translational research, where articulation of impact is core to describing the project. But in other national contexts, particularly places like the UK, impact has been embedded in a much wider range of research grant application streams. And of course, this is the trend that's continuing. So coming on to something I'm going to talk about later is, you know, what we'd be quite interested to see how this is changing over time and where it's going next. Um, 
The use of impact in the distribution of national block grant funding, uh, research quality assessment or reporting via case studies was uh, something that came through at a, lo at a lower level, um, but found a qu across quite a range of national contexts and to varying degrees. So, for example, you know, there's places like Belgium where there's no national research assessment system, uh, Sweden where there's a national agency that sets a framework for institutions to do their own uh, quality assessment, self-assessment around research, uh, right up to, play, to the UK, where of course we have the research excellence framework that imposes a very clear national benchmarking system uh, looking at research outputs, impact and environment. So there's a real spectrum of different contexts there. And of course, again, that is changing over time. And some of the respondents um, were talking about expectations around more national uh, instruments looking at research uh, quality evaluation. So I think that's something that we'll see changing over time. Of course, the core of the survey was looking at how organizations were responding to the impact agenda in their strategies. Um, here we find that the majority of respondents uh, mentioned that they had embedded impact in some wider research uh, strategy and actually my own organization this is the case uh, for us although I think it's going to change in time as impact becomes a more distinctive element of the agenda. 27% um, of respondents reported having a dedicated institutional impact strategy and 14% said that they were uh, had one in development. Um, I think I, I've mentioned selection bias on here because I think as Bettina mentioned there's that the response rates were not huge and I, and I suspect that organizations that that either have or were thinking about developing an impact strategy were more likely to respond to the survey. So it would be really interesting to see uh, to see a wider cross section and try and find more information outside of the group that we heard from. Um, we asked organisations about the level of resources that they were committing to the impact agenda. In other words, how many uh, full time equivalent staff did they have working specifically on impact related activities? Um, here we found that there were six organisations that said they didn't have anyone. Um, the bulk of the respondents had uh, between, well, zero effectively and around five uh, full-time equivalent staff. Four reported between five and ten and one organisation reported 30 staff, um, which is a bit of an outlier. I suspect that part of the reason for that outlier is that a, a number of organizations uh, mentioned this as well. It's quite hard to be certain about what the full-time equivalent commitment is of people working on the impact agenda in many organizations. Some universities reported having a dedicated team, the name of which was something like the research impact team, but in many cases the, the resource was much more distributed, so it's harder to really identify where it was or, or put a, a concrete number on it. And I, and I think this is important um, when we're interpreting this data, especially if we're thinking about using it for benchmarking across organizations. Um, we asked, finally, we asked um, where responsibility lay within the organization for the development of impact strategy and its implementation. So that the, the bulk of respondents um, talked about having the development of the strategy um, being the responsibility of a senior academic leader like a vice provost for research or pro vice chancellor or whatever dean of research, whereas the delivery tended to sit with a professional specialist. Um, in some institutions, these responsibilities were held by uh, particular groups. Uh, and you can see if you take a look at the full report, some of the groups and committees that were named by respondents, things like faculty boards, uh, and in some cases dedicated research analytics and impact teams uh, took responsibility for elements of, of either the development or delivery of these strategies. Um, and I think this, I mean, I guess that the key thing for me is that this highlights the importance of having good interconnectivity between the academic leadership and the professional specialist leadership when it comes to um, the development and implementation of research strategies uh, in, and impact strategies and research strategies for that matter. So finally, um, we put a little section at the end of the report in where we might go next with this. And I think this is something that we'd be really keen to hear back from members of, of this, uh, this workshop on. So I think um, we very much came away uh, from this process with the sense that this was just the beginning of uh, of our engagement with with the wider IAMA community around impact. Um, it would be really interesting to see in a future survey 
what has happened what's happened in the year since the survey was closed particularly whether we've got some significant changes in emphasis as a result of uh, the emerging policy drivers at a national level um, whether or not changes in in funding streams things like the uh, advent of the horizon europe missions uh, or or the impact of of people uh, developing funding streams around the UN Sustainable Development Goals or whatever are having an impact on on how people are responding to this agenda. We'd also like to explore a bit deeper into some key areas, particularly things like skill sets. Um, what, how do people measure uh, success? And are, th are there any learnings we can take away from organisations that feel like they've done particularly well in responding to the impact agenda? I think the question of resource levels is one that certainly comes up a lot in, in my institution and is one where I think sharing across different national contexts and organisational contexts would be very useful. Uh, and also the level of interest and engagement across different management levels. You know, the, the impact agenda is certainly over the last five years or so become increasingly uh, prevalent in, in discourse at different levels in, in organisations. And I think, again, this is something that we see uh, continuing as a trend. So uh, thank you. I'm going to pass back to Joachim now and uh, for the next speaker. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that, Andrew. So next, uh, we'll be hearing from uh, Barbara Spano, who will be um, presenting us today the uh, Technical University of Denmark's um, uh, case study. Thank you very much, uh, Joachim. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Bettina and Andrew. Um, my name is Barbara Spano, and I work at, <clears throat> at the Technical University of Denmark at the DTU Research Office. DTU doesn't have uh, an impact strategy, or and we don't have impact policy or any other framework uh, document that could uh, guide the way in which uh, we could work on impact. So what uh, I started to do um, last year when I was uh, put in charge of an impact project was to try to see what are the strategy and the policy that we have at DTU and how we can use them to set a frame. So I've been working and looking at the DTU's new strategy that is called Technology for People. Um, DTU is a technical university and there has been always a lot of focus on the fact that the, the technology and the science that we work with and on should be uh, used for the benefit of the society. Impact is not mentioned in the strategy as such, but there is a focus on the fact that um, the achievement and development should be actually for, for people, technology for people and benefit of the society. At the same time, when the new strategy was launched in 2020, also sustainability policy was launched. And that was, uh, again, because of the increased focus uh, also within research uh, on sustainability issues. At the same time, uh, um, a huge um, sustainability program started uh, with 12 projects inside this program, spanning from sustainability within uh, innovation, education, and different um, areas. And then what I managed to do was uh, <clears throat> together on working on a project that was related to impact. The link was close to uh, sustainability impact or impact on sustainability. And uh, I changed a little bit the content of the project so that we could just focus on impact uh, in a more general way and then also address uh, the sustainability aspect. Uh, these three elements were just like the frame where I started to work uh, uh, within. And then uh, I really needed to mention that everything started actually one year before. It was in the summer of 2019 when Andrew and Bettina were uh, finalizing the survey and I had to give some uh, feedback to the survey and the question within the policy representation committee. And then I started to thinking who should answer this survey and questionnaire uh, at the DTU? Well, is this going to be like on my desk? Should I give that to somebody else? And what should I answer to this question? So that already in 2019 set some um, things, uh, some, uh, started like to, to make my head up uh, in thinking what we could do. And then I tried to address that, uh, of course, with the possibilities that uh, open up uh, the year after. 
So when we started the work with the impact, uh, um, the impact project that I am responsible for started in uh, 2020, March, and it ends actually in two weeks. We have uh, the final meeting this afternoon within the project team, and then where we have also to discuss about the next step, because this was just a project to start the work, but then we have to work uh, um, also afterwards, but how it has to be defined. But again, why we started to think on why we needed to address impact? Well, we felt really like that we need to empower our researcher both to enhance the benefit of their research and the society, remain competitive, but also the last aspect is like secure funding. There is a, a clear and increasing request from funding agencies that impacts should be addressed in the proposal. And it was important for us uh, to make sure that uh, our researchers are aware of that uh, and can actually explain that uh, when they write the um, research application. Then we started to look at how, how are we going to address impact at so we started thinking about, okay, we really need to understand both at the central level in the administration, but also like at the local level, at the researcher level, what impact is about. Then we needed to start a discussion. Do we need a definition? Do we need a strategy? Is like the strategy coming before the work on impact or we can just start working on impact. And in that way, we have like a little bit of more freedom afterwards to um, have an influence on the strategy and the definition that we would like to use. And then we really thought like, okay, because it is a project and there are some evaluation and requirement, we need some deliverables. So we thought, okay, then we can also start working at some tools that can help the researcher in addressing impact when writing a, a research application and, um, and what they are supposed to do and how they are supposed to work. So regarding the definition, uh, we thought that even if we didn't have uh, a definition, a DTU definition, because we don't have a strategy, that we could look at our strategy and then at all the definitions that are out there about impact and then try to see if there was something that we felt that was actually very close to our way of working. And then uh, this is like, thank you to, to Bettina uh, that presented me this uh, document, the literacy, uh, impact literacy workbook. And there was actually a very good definition about impact that is really like uh, mirroring our way of working with impact. So we started like to work, uh, like looking at this definition and then what we could do. And here the, the impact is defined as a probable effect of research in the real world, the changes that we can see beyond academia, and that's like our technology for people, and then driven by a number of factors, so drivers, including funders' requirements and research assessment. So then, like, it was like the next step. Okay, how are we going to do this? So what uh, I did, I, like, started to think, okay, where do we start? And uh, since many universities had a lot of experience in working with the impact, I decided to get in touch with the, these universities and then see how they work. And then we established a focus group at the DTU, um, comprising both researchers and fundraiser. And then we thought, okay, we need also like to discuss uh, our um, way of working with some experts. And here we got in contact uh, with the consultant company uh, called Research Impact Academy that is based in Australia. And uh, we used uh, um, this consultant as a mentor to guide us uh, in our way of uh, working. <clears throat> Here is like a long list, uh, or maybe not super long, but all the universities and the uh, funding agencies that we have been in uh, contact with. And um, Bettina was like the, the first one. So it was the uh, Oslo Metropolitan University, um, KTH. Then uh, also some uh, Danish university, Southern Denmark University, Copenhagen University, Oslo University. We didn't uh, manage to meet with the London School of Economics, but we had a very good look at all the way, the way they work with impact and the information that are available online. And then uh, we had the uh, Danish um, public and the private funding agencies, so the Novo Nordisk Foundation and the Danish Council for Independent Research. And then uh, we had this uh, dialogue with the European Commission, and it was uh, mainly through the IARMA 
uh, work on understanding how the EU was going to tackle impact in uh, Horizon Europe. And then, of course, we also looked a lot in like how UK work with the impact. And here we got a lot of information um, online. So the second, as I said, we established a focus group. It was very um, good from our side. So we got really feedback from people working with impact. As I said, both the researchers and the research managers, there were people that had kind of experience in working with research so that it was easier for them also to take the jump and then think about the impact. So we had identified some tasks that we wanted to do, to, to work with them with. And, um, and how we could, uh, some of the challenges that we identified and how we could uh, um, address them. And here are like the main, uh, some, some of the main conclusion that we, um, that we uh, identified. So from our analysis, uh, university with an impact strategy and a definition work in a more structured way. It doesn't mean that uh, if you don't have a strategy or a definition, you cannot work with impact, uh, but the fact that there is a commitment at the leadership level of working with impact uh, very often results in the fact that uh, there are actually people that uh, um, can allocate their time for working with impact uh, and they are able uh, to spend time on that and, um, <clears throat> yeah, some, and, and achieve as actually some greater results with that. Uh. Another element that uh, proved to be very important is the driver. So it can be a um, driver at the uh, national level. It can be incentives. We came across some university that was actually giving some uh, bonuses uh, to researchers working with the uh, impact. Uh, others that look at the career of researchers and the achievement they had uh, on some like um, impact indicator that they had developed. Uh, and uh, these researchers, they have also possibility to take that into consideration as they do, for example, with the publication or other kind of achievements. And then, of course, the requirement of the funding agency, they are always uh, a huge driver because uh, we all uh, face the situation that we need uh, uh, more funding to perform research. And when the funding agency, both the national level and international level, require that impact is addressed, that is a very big driver for university for working with impact. Then we also like came across the fact that many universities and funding agencies were um, actually uh, giving a role to their communication office. There were many research managers that actually worked uh, a lot with the communication office that helped both during, uh, for example, a research proposal or research project, sorry, and also afterwards in communicating the achievement and the results. Uh, it was not uh, as such something happening like at proposal stage, but more during the project and also after the end of the project. But as we see also with Horizon Europe, there is a lot of focus also on the impact uh, many years after a project is ended. And there like an involvement of the communication offices uh, um, could be relevant. Um, and then regarding tools, uh, uh, the first, uh, like everybody was agreed, like uh, don't spend time uh, in making long uh, guidelines. Nobody's going to read them. Just try to stick with the simple, easy documents that can be easy to read. Uh, researchers don't want to spend time uh, in understanding the, like a long definition and what impact is about. They prefer like one to one session and then going to like uh, an explanation from a narrative to quantifiable data that could be like uh, used also in a research application. Um, then, uh, like uh, the way of working with impact, uh, even if uh, um, funding agency they have like a different definition and different requirements and different expectation that require forms of flexibility when addressing impact. Uh, then the understanding of impact uh, goes beyond uh, the requirement of the funding agency. So that was also something that we came across of like uh, trying to, that it's relevant to try to build like a basis uh, uh, understanding that. Um, and then, yeah, some also collaboration with the bibliometric office and database for storage information. So this is just like a few screen dumps of the Research Impact Academy that provided us with some mentoring. And then, yeah, 
like a very shortly about some achievements in the next step. But I think that uh, I can say after one year that we have a better understanding of uh, research impact, the impact of research and what that could be about. We have actually collected and also designed relevant tools that can be used by research managers and researchers at DTU. We have created a web page with impact related documents. We had the workshop at DTU and we have also planned other workshops. And as I said before, the project is ending now in May. So we need to understand uh, what do we do afterwards. Uh, um, we still don't have a strategy. Uh, we don't know if that is the way we, we want to go or if we just prefer to continue to work uh, without a strategy. But um, yeah, these are something like uh, that we have been working for the past uh, year. Thank you very much. And I leave now the floor to Joachim. Thank you. All right, thank you, Barbara. And uh, closing the panel today, we'll, uh, we'll hear from Roisin, who will uh, share with us the Science Foundation Ireland's perspective as a funding agency. Thank you very much, um, Joachim, for that introduction. Um, can everybody see my screen? Can you see the slides? Yeah, great. Okay, so thank you very much, everybody. That was a very interesting um, set of presentations. Very, very interesting to hear about impact from the point of view of, of the universities and, and especially from such a wide cohort of stakeholders. Um, so my name is Roisin Cheshire. I'm head of the individual led research team in Science Foundation Ireland. So maybe not all of you are familiar with SFI, but we are the main funding agency in Ireland um, funding excellent impactful research. So impact is something that has been um, really part of what we do for a very long time now. I think about 10 years ago, we started introducing um, impact as a review criterion to all of our programs. Um, so if you look at SFI's mission, um, we fund excellent and impactful research and talent that shapes the future of Ireland through anticipating what's next and widening engagement and collaboration. So impact is, is upfront and central in, in everything that we do from both a pre-proposal point of view and also from a post-award monitoring point of view. So we have just launched a new strategy for the next five years, and that strategy talks about delivering today and preparing for tomorrow. And in the delivering for today aspect, key to that is funding excellent uh, research, recruiting top talent and maintaining and retaining top talent in, in Ireland, but also to, to communicate more the tangible benefits of the research that we fund. And then in preparing for tomorrow, anticipating what's next is a key aspect also of, of what our strategy is about. So understanding the impact of the research that we funded to date and really anticipating where the gaps are, where the needs are and what we have to do for the future is, is all driven by the impact um, piece of, of, of the puzzle. So in terms of, of funding excellent impactful research, this is, this is has, again, something that we have been doing for a very long time now. And we describe impact as the demonstrable contribution that excellent research makes to the economy and society. We see that it's a balance between excellence and impact, everything that we fund. So in terms of the, the quality of the applicant and the, the, the excellence of their idea or the state of the art of their research, everything that, that they're proposing is, uh, is of course very important important, but they also must talk about how their research is going to deliver to society. And it's not just economic benefit, it's societal benefit. So we do a lot of work with our community. We, we engage with our research offices quite a lot um, to really discuss with them various aspects of what we do and try to, try to really partner with them and collaborate with them as much as possible on how we can drive their agendas forward as well. So as part of our, our website, and I've, I've added a lot of slides um, at the end of this presentation for, for information, so happy to share those following the meeting with everybody. Um, we have detailed guidance on impact, so the community is very clear on what we expect, and not just what we expect, but what the reviewers expect. So everything that we fund is subject to international peer review. We use excellent international reviewers from all over the world, but not from Ireland, because Ireland is just 
is too small and, and there would be far too much conflict of interest. So everybody that we use is outside of Ireland. So not understanding the Irish um, national landscape, we have to educate our reviewers in, as to the importance of impact, how we measure it, how it should be scored, etc. So it's, it's a big endeavour, but it's something I, I should really emphasise that we have been doing for a long time now. And, and initially, the, the community took some time to embrace the idea of impact and writing impact statements, but it's become very normal now in, in our community. So this is just a slide on examples of economic and societal impact. And we're, I'm not going to go through these, but we try to we try to put put out to our community, you know, examples of what good impact looks like. And the more that we fund and the, the more feedback that we get, the, the easier that is to do. OK, so assessment of impact at, pr at proposal stage. This is key to everything that we fund. Um, we normally review, I think, like most agencies, we review the, the quality of the applicant, the quality of the, re the research program and the, the potential impact of the research. So everything, all the funding that SFI has comes from our government and we have to answer to our government as to how we are spending that money. It is taxpayers money from from everybody in Ireland. And what is the benefit? What is it doing for the country? So one of the criterion that we, we use is potential impact and value to Ireland. So that's part of the majority of our, of our applications um, that are submitted to SFI. So consider that almost a third of the score that's, that's allocated to, uh, to a proposal. And in some programs, we, we weight impact more strongly than in others. But in, you're talking about a third potentially of the, of the overall score of a proposal is going to be based on their, their impact statement. So in most of our key programs, um, there is an impact statement required as part of the application. That's maximum three pages. And in the call document, we will we will put guidance to the, the applicant to ask them to include appreciation of how the research may be developed and exploited in the medium to long term, understanding that impact doesn't happen overnight, that it can take time, but what is their pathway to impact? Um, a realistic and convincing evaluation of the benefits that will result from a successful project if it is successful, and areas and fields where impact are, impacts are likely to be made. So you, you cannot get funding from SFI without having a good impact statement that's reviewed positively by an international peer reviewer. So as I say, detailed guidance in relation to impact is included and available on our website. And we, we probably need to do a bit more in updating that and, and, and making that more current. Okay, so again, I'm not going to go into detail on these slides, but this is just a, an example of, of what's on that website. So we will talk about, you know, the impact um, happening in different categories, health and well-being, never more so than in the in the world that we're living in today, in building human capacity, in, in dealing with the environment, in climate change, in, in looking at policy, public services, professional services, how we're engaging with the international community, what is our international profile, and what are we really doing that that's improving society. Another, and I'm just going to mention this because it's something that's quite new for us, but we have recently um, signed up to the um, Declaration of Research Assessment, um, the San Francisco Declaration of Research Assessment. So we've actually introduced in the past year an, a new version of our CV template that is used as part of our application process. So now instead of the reviewers focusing just on the H indexes of the applicants that, that submit to SFI, they are, also, they are being guided to look at the more impact impactful part of their, their applicant track record. So this is this what, what is in this slide is what is in the CV template. So all applicants have to describe the significance and or impact of up to three key achievements in, the, in a number of categories below. So generation of knowledge, development of individuals, training, supporting broader society and supporting the research community. So it's not just about numbers of papers. It, it's not just about the excellence. It's more about the it's, it's also about the impact. So this is this is quite new and our community again are, are, are grappling with this and getting to know it. It's probably going to take um, a couple of years to really get this embedded, but it's another very strong um, move to the to the impact agenda. And finally, um, just in, in terms of post-award, SFI is quite unique in that we do, we carry out midterm progress site reviews of, of the majority of our funded programs. So even if it's a small award for an early career researcher, we'll still bring in two or three international reviewers at the midterm stage to assess the progress of that, of that 
program. It's very important for early career, we feel, so that, that people are, are kept on the right track or if there's a, a need to, to change the direction of the research, they can do so at an early stage. It's also important for us to monitor that what we are supporting um, is, is coming to fruition and that, that progress is being made. Again, answering to our department on the, on the key investments that they've made. So we carry out progress site reviews and as part of those progress site reviews, we review impact. There, or I should say the scientific reviewers review impact. So they look back at the impact statement, how the impact statement has, has, has resulted in intangible benefits. Um, and they, you know, they, they write up an assessment of the, of the impact. Our annual reports have a number of impact declaration statements where the applicants or the awardees have to, to select a number of those which describe their, their key impacts. And that's a very good quantitative way of us measuring what the impact, um, the impact is. Um, the recent, we, we do a research output census every year as well. So we look at the outcomes, not so much the impact, but the outcomes of course lead to impact. And then we have impact case studies. And again, I think we need to do a better job at, at making more of these, promoting these to our, our public um, community. And that's something that's certainly on our agenda as part of our new strategy. So, I'm going to leave you with this slide, which is a very detailed, busy slide, but this is this is actually how we answer to our department and our government as to what has the 200 million that we've given you in the last year done for us and done for Ireland. So we're, this is very tantamount to us as an organisation that we can really articulate the benefit of the funding that's been given to us, not only for our public, uh, our, our community, our, our general public, but also for our department so that they're they're willing to give us that funding again and again and potentially increase the funding. So there's a lot of numbers presented here and numbers are important, but they're just the outcomes. What's, what we really need to, to do is, is almost create a version of this, which describes the impact. And it would be lovely, let's listening to the conversations today, if we could tie in with the impact strategies of our own universities and our own institutes of technology in Ireland, so that we can show that the money that's been given to us has produced all these fantastic, very relevant outcomes, but have also enabled our community to, to deliver on their impact strategies. So thank you very much. Happy to answer questions if you have some later. Great. Thank you so much for that. So I know that you are um, you, you're going to have to leave at 11 and I know Andrew as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll ask the first questions from the audience uh, right away to, to you, Rosen. If uh, this question came from uh, Dipti, um, Dipti would like uh, you to speak more on the pathway and how to approach this as this is uh, also important for Horizon Europe. The pathway to impact. Right. Yes, yes. Yes. So this is very important. Um, we in, in all of our in all of our guidance, we, we try to emphasize that it's not about, you know, the, it's not about achieving impact overnight, that there is a pathway to impact. And that pathway includes things like training the right people, making sure we have PhD student programs in place, making sure that the right areas are being funded. So we, we, we fund to a very broad number of national prioritization areas. But as, as new things come on board, like climate change, for example, like the, the COVID pandemic, that we can react quickly and that our community can react quickly. So the impact statement that they have to put together as part of their application really has to articulate how they are going to, be, to produce um, impact. Um, but it doesn't have to be overnight, it can be over a number of years. So I think we, we as an organization then also try to align our programs to the various stages along that pathway. So we have a program for early stage careers, and we have a program for mid and advanced careers. We have a very advanced research professorship program. We also have the PhD studentship programs, and we have very large scale research centers. So we cover the broad range. Great, thank you so much for the answer. Uh, just uh, before I continue, just a, a note to let you know that the uh, meeting is being recorded uh, in the hopes that Yarma will be able to make this uh, session available to its members for later viewing. Um, I'll, I'll ask the next, next question to Andrew. Um, Andrew, what does the uh, panel think, or you um, um, on behalf of the panel think, uh, that will be the impact of new drivers um, of impact support uh, being led by the New Horizon Europe program and uh, do you think that it will uh, necessitate change in our research support structures? Uh, thanks. Uh, that's a really good question. And I, I don't think I can speak on behalf of the 
panel very effectively on that necessarily. I think um, from from my own perspective, um, I guess it depends on the national context you're already in um, and, and where you are as an organization and as a sector in terms of responding to the impact agenda. Um, certainly the, 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 the Horizon Europe program with the, with the mission orientated research element, um, I mean, our own experience of working in mission orientated and challenge led research, things like the Global Challenge Research Fund in the UK, which targets um, uh, the UN sustainable development goals and development uh, uh, and, and development related research, um, tells us that we need to work really hard to ensure that we've got the necessary support and training, as we've just heard. Um, uh, particularly when it comes to academic linkages to stakeholders, but also around areas like um, contracting and risk management. So as we as we move into an environment where we're where we're undertaking really ambitious, challenge-led and mission-orientated research activities, it means we'll, we'll be working with a broader range of stakeholders in in a new set of territories in many cases. And one of the challenges we've had has been making sure that our institutional approaches and our support structures around um, delivering the necessary uh, contracts and uh, partnership arrangements in these sorts of uh, projects really need to be uh, fit for purpose and significantly more uh, flexible and responsive than they have been in the past. So I think there's, you know, as well as the, the you know, the general uh, baseline of, of, of impact related support, the funding that we need to, to deliver that to support interactions. I think the, you know, the contracting and risk management side is something that we're really going to have to look at in the future. And it's something that we're, we're emphasizing in the UK. Great. Thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, Bettina, another question from the audience, and, and this one I'll uh, address you. Um, have any good ideas come out of the survey that uh, you think could be taken up by some of the ERM members uh, that may be newer to supporting impact and, and preparing our researchers to understand impact? Yeah, just one of the ideas behind the survey was if, um, for example, an organization would have an impact strategy, if that also would help the researchers to write about impact in their proposals. So if that would make it easier to work with impact in proposals and projects. And that, of course, could be further discussed in, in the AMA community, you know, how to work with it, how to encourage and, um, research organizations to work more with impact as also seeing it as also support for advisors and administrators. And uh, re reflecting on also what Andrew said, uh, we already see that impact has become even more important in Horizon Europe. And sometimes I was wondering, uh, I'm wondering actually, you maybe all know that now in Horizon Europe, uh, the commission is asking all organizations that they are publishing their gender equality plan on their website. So in the future, will we have the demand from the commission that the organizations have to publish their impact strategy on the website. Mm. So um, uh, this, I mean, it just shows that the, that the focus on impact has been growing for many years. And uh, it's very clear what Roisin also explained when it comes to, to Ireland, you have to show your government for what you are using the money. And then mm -hmm. it comes about, uh, yeah, what are we doing with the funding yeah. and what kind of impact will it create? Yeah. So um, if we like it or not, we cannot uh, avoid this um, wider discussion on impact and to what will it uh, and how we are working with it at organizations and mm -hmm. at organizational level and also at projects and proposal level. Yeah, if I could just add to that, Bettina, um, part of the application process um, for us as well is, is there's a, there is always a letter of support provided by the, the university, um, you know, to support the application. And that normally will say things like this is this we will give this researcher the equipment that they need, the facilities that they need, the support that they need. But they also can align, you know, the, the, the I, I suppose the with with an impact strategy that perhaps are their strategic objectives. I mean, I think that would be very useful for reviewers to see also um, that the, the, you know, the person that is applying is a very key part of their research is a key part of what the overall strategy 
and potentially impact strategy of the organization is. So that is part of our application process for some of our pro very top level programs like the research professorship program where you're recruiting key talent from abroad and they're very significant awards they're up to five million in, in their ERC advanced standard um you know you would you, you would we have an expression of interest stage where the university again has to really talk about how this person will will bring forward their agenda so I think it's it's happening a bit already but maybe it just does it's just not called what you're calling it but perhaps we could certainly work work with the with the universities a bit more on that to build that idea into our into our call documentation. Great, thank you. So, Barbara, a question for you: How do you encourage your researchers um, to think in terms of impact of their research from the outset? Um, thank you, Joachim. Um, well, I I think that for us the main issues is really related to the requirement of the funding agency. And, um, and the fact that the funding agency, they have uh, different uh, ways of describing impact, uh, defining impact, uh, and also uh, requesting how impact should be described uh, at proposal stage. I think that for our researcher, or it is at least something that came uh, within the focus group, uh, uh, also researchers that have been uh, working for many years uh, within a specific field, they have uh, sometimes difficulty in quantifying uh, their uh, impact uh, in a period that can be like three, five, ten years uh, after the project ends. They feel kind of uh, uneasy in uh, putting uh, uh, quantifiable data. So they are okay in like a narrative where they can describe what the impact can be. But uh, when uh, they are requested on, um, for example, a percentage of reduction of something uh, or percentage of use of something, it can be both within the energy sector or climate or other sector. Either you like streamline what you do with like requirements that can be like um, at international level, uh, it can be Paris Agreement. But when you look at the proposal level, how your proposal, how your research will move, uh, towards like, uh, I don't know, something that can be, again, related to the Paris Agreement, they can have difficulties in, uh, in quantify their uh, impact. Uh, so I think they think impact, uh, they have difficulties in uh, addressing the requirement of the funding agencies. So, so that's what we are trying to understand how we can help them. Thank you. Great, thank you, Barbara. Rosen, I know you have to leave in a minute. Um, so I'll ask one question that Maria posed in the chat um, window. Uh, what is, was the main driver to include impact as a driver in, in grant proposals? And also we have a, a question from across the Atlantic from Tania. Uh, do you have a sense of whether there may be more resistance to measuring research impact in any particular disciplines? Yeah, so I think certainly the main driver um, was our, I mean, we're, we're actually in a new department now, but when, when SFI was first set up, we were part of, of a department, which was, which was the economy department, you know, so the enterprise and, and economy, enterprise business and innovation was the name of the department that we, that we were part of initially. And so we had to show, we, we really, you know, we, we have sister agencies that were more involved in you might you might have heard of the IDA and Enterprise Ireland who were more involved in, in you know starting up companies and supporting um multinationals come to, to come to Ireland. So we were we were the other part of that piece of that, if you like, that environment. So we really had to show our, our government that the investment that they were making was going to create jobs, was going to to feed into that cycle. And so to create the talent that could then be employed by these companies that were being started up but to support the multinational um, agenda. So initially, we were we were probably more focused on the economy and um, the 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 um, the economic drivers, um, but also we are now in a new department, which is the education and um, further education department. So there's in the last three or four years, there's been more, more of an emphasis on individual led research and you know and, and focusing on. We've always had the other impacts as, as and, and they're always they've always been important. But we really are doing, you're know, focusing now on, on talking about the tangible benefits of the research across all of those potential impacts. But to answer the question, that was the real driver. We had to show where the impact, how the impact was going to, to help our society recover from the downturn in, in back in 2008. Great, thank you so much.
So our time is up for today. It was a, a great pleasure to facilitate this session. I wanna thank uh, especially our speakers for sharing their, their knowledge, uh, their insight on the research impact agenda. I also wanna thank uh, particularly to Niall and jo Johanna for their tremendous support. Um, and on behalf of EARMA and the uh, Policy and Representation Committee, I wanna especially thank the audience for joining us today and for participating. Until next time, be well.